folks, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click that little red button below. And if you'd like to be notified of my posts first, click the little bell and it'll send you a notification just as soon as I post. As we continue with the Turpin case, it has um, been a long time that we've been following the story now. They started the, this arrest started in January uh, 16th. Um, you know, seven adults and six minors were, um, you know, being held sort of against their will and chained and starved and not allowed to use the washroom. And we've heard of many horrible details. As we suspected, though, there are um, more, more, there is more evidence that it's coming out through the journals. They have found a lot of evidence, which is exactly what we thought was going to happen, right? Um, they have provided um, some phone numbers and an email for anybody who may have some more information or did have some dealings in the past with this family, um, with Louise or David um, alone or with the children or what have you. Um, there has been many tips that have been coming through, um, which, is, which is good. It's been coming in from outside of California as well as inside of California. So that means that the word is getting out that we want people to call. We want somebody to say something. We need somebody to speak up. So congrats to the people who are making those steps and they're um, helping this case. Uh, their next court appearance is on February 23rd and it's just supposed to be a routine hearing. Um, the, the nice key points that have happened though, is that there's been over $500,000 in donations to help this, the children. Um, there was a, ch the chambers, um, office actually did a dine out uh, event that raised, um, almost $10,000 for them. And, uh, they have been learning to play the guitar. So Fender's guitar donated 13 guitars to the kids, um, you know, to, to them so they can enjoy practicing more and more. I love that they're also doing animal therapy. Now, let's be real about the situation. They are going to have to get some of these, some of the evidence and the wording from the mouths of the babes, as they say. They're going to need to put uh, some of these children on the stand. And like, I don't want anybody to get upset about that because I believe that they are going to make sure that they choose the right children to do that with or the right people to do that with because not everybody is strong enough to kind of get through that. So I believe that they've been working with these, um, you know, these people, these 13 people for long enough that they're going to be able to find out which is the best ones that will be able to survive um, such a situation where they need to kind of go through court and remember everything that happened and describe these things in detail, how they felt. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster and it's going to need a strong individual who can, um, with some help and some therapy and some support, be able to outpour uh, what exactly happened behind all those closed doors and how, how that happened and how that went about. So I know there's going to be some people out there that are that are going to be just devastated to hear that these children or some of them are going to have to be speaking up in court. But in all honesty, we, we can't just uh, go off of these charges and we need to have somebody say this is what happened and this is how it happened because it, what happened was not right. But clearly, you know, for whatever reason, uh, David and Louise seem to have thought that that was an okay way to parent. However, the rest of the world is about to show them differently and that that's not the right way to parent at all, right? So uh, I believe that they will be properly prepared. Um, they, you know, Hestron, I think his name is... Um, Mike Hestron, the lawyer, uh, he he is going to he is going to be uh, preparing the people who are going to be going into court properly. Uh, Hestron is his first or his last name. I I don't see his first name here just yet, but uh, he is the prosecuting attorney, and um, you know he did stress that they're going to spend quite a bit of time, days before even going in for the hearing. They're going to be in the courtroom with the judge. They're going to meet the judge. They're going to be able to. Um, get themselves comfortable with the surrounding and what they what they can expect to see um, in the real deal, right? When it really goes down. And the fact that they're willing to use the animal therapy and whatnot to, uh, 
to help them get through this, I think is phenomenal. We all know that they had dogs in the house and I'm sure that that brought them some comfort. So it's nice to know that they're going to continue um, to use animal therapy in order to help them get through this last little bit and go on into continuing to heal and, and uh, revamp themselves. Um, so let's let the tips keep coming in, folks. I am going to post the phone number and email address. I will say the phone number for anybody who's interested. It is area code 951-210-1000. Very easy phone number. If you have any information or you did deal with them in the past, please uh, be a voice and speak up and let them know what that was like, even if it was something very minor. They could use all they could get. Um, it's nice that they're going to give them a, f a fair trial in all of this situation, but I am hopeful for the most strictest of outcome in the end, as this was really, really uncalled for and completely unfair to the 13 people that were subject to it all. So thanks for watching, folks. I will keep you updated. February 23rd is their next court hearing. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click that little red button below. If you'd like to be notified of my post first, click the bell and it'll send you something as soon as I post. Thanks for watching, folks, and stay safe out there. Bye for now.